Hi, welcome to Ted's Modeling Technique. I'm building up a funny car and I want to replace the stock chrome-plated wheelie bar set with uh, something that looks a little more realistic and aluminum. It means new mounting points, uh, rod ends, uh, wheel, uh, wheel assembly, and that sort of thing. So let's see how we do that. First thing I want to do is make a sketch of what I'm building. This way I can experiment, you know, here and not with actual parts and it'll save a lot of time. I've done a lot of erasing, I don't know if it shows up in these areas, and I'd rather do that on paper and not waste time with uh, parts and glue. Uh, I'm substituting aluminum here, aluminum tubing, for the chrome plastic. Now I need to connect all of this together. I've got an eyelet here on the frame already, so this rod end will uh, bolt right up to it. And there's a little screw I'm going to put in there. On the other end, um, I've got another rod end uh, going to the wheel assembly. Now I'm going to have to make this piece. I'm going to get a little piece of aluminum and make this little bracket that goes around the wheel. And then uh, this uh, part of the wheelie bar is going to attach to that here. And then a rod end on this side. But I don't really have anything to attach this rod end uh, to here. So um, you can see right below this little inverted looking F thing, and this is where the rear end is going to mount right here. Right below this um, is an area I can use, but there's nothing there to uh, bolt my rod end to. So I'm going to make this little piece that will fit into this cavity, and then I'm going to make an eyelet like this one and uh, put it on the end of that. That will give me something to bolt the, um, the rod end to. So uh, let's take a look at the frame from here. Here you can see this eyelet that the top uh, aluminum rod is going to attach to. And then down here is that uh, inverted F thing I was talking about with the rear end. And then this little cavity right down in here is where this piece is going to tie in. This one right here. So let's, uh, let's see what we have to do to make that. I'll start by determining what size material and, and what materials I'm going to need. Uh, this one happens to have a dual set of wheelie bars, a right and a left with a cross member. Um, other dragsters, uh, top fuel rails, whatnot, might only have a single wheelie bar. This one happens to be a double. I'll measure with the micrometer what this size is, and it's uh, 0.06 of an inch, which it turns out to be a sixteenth. And if I compare that with this evergreen, I mean evergreen, this uh, K&S aluminum tubing of 1 16th inch, it's really close. I think it's going to uh, reproduce fine. I think that's going to look proportional. And uh, the reason I picked this particular number 147 evergreen uh, uh, strip styrene is because this is uh, going to equal what the, the thickness is of some um, uh, flanges I need to make on the rear of the frame in order to accept the uh, rod ends and whatnot. So that's why I picked these uh, particular materials. Here's what we're going to need. A micrometer, an X-Acto knife or two, a um, drill bit, a couple of bits, uh, a micro brush, I'll tell you why we're going to need that in a minute, uh, some uh, uh, sheet metal, and the thinnest I could find is this uh, K&S number 254, you know, sheet aluminum. So 1 16th inch uh, tubing, and that's a K&S 5100. Uh, some uh, a styrene strip from Evergreen, and I'm using a number 147. This happens to match the thickness of uh, some of the original parts on the car that I'm duplicating. And then we've got the uh, R&B motion uh, rod ends. Uh, I'm using a number 1506 for uh, what I'm doing here. You can certainly uh, use a different one and uh, number 1253 for the bolts. Here's this eyelet that I want to duplicate and then down here is that inverted F looking piece where I want to fabricate something down here in order to fasten this rod end to. So the easiest thing would be to uh, slide a piece of plastic down behind here so that we can kind of trace, trace this piece and uh, use that as a template to cut it out. Now make sure it's a little bit below the bottom of the frame here because as you cut and trim this piece it's going to uh, probably shrink up a little bit and then it's going to be too short. 
But now this one is a little bit too small to try to get in here and uh, make something here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just draw a little uh, piece on the end of this uh, plastic stock and then uh, cut it out by hand and then uh, trial and error it'll fit. Make sure you drill your hole first while you've got this big piece to hang on to uh, before you actually uh, cut that. So what you're going to end up with is not only this piece to cut out but then you've got this one here that's been marked also. We end up with a piece that looks like this and then when we're done these two pieces are actually going to be together kind of like that and go in on the uh, end of that frame. So while we're at it let's uh, let's cut our wheels. Here's where the micro brush comes in. It's going to be our wheels. Now I happen to have these laying around and it also happens to be the same size as the uh, wheel in the kit. So um, it, you know it's going to make it really easy, save some time. Uh, the problem with this is the uh, there's some raised lettering on the end of this micro brush. So if you cut this off right here, you've got a good surface to start working with. And that uh, turns out to be like this. Now while you've got this uh, big piece to hold on to, you want to drill your hole. And the bolt I'm using is a, uh, a 31 thousandths of an inch. So I'm using a number 63 drill bit, which is which is 32 thousandths of an inch. It gives me a little bit of play. But uh, sand this edge down first, otherwise it's going to be too square looking. So as this is bevel that edge a little bit, drill the hole, and then cut it off. Now I, I cut off about a millimeter of a piece, and that was uh, uh, you know, kind of matching what the kit piece has. And then you'll have to uh, uh, sand the other side of that also to kind of make it a little bit uh, rounded. This is what it looks like at the end. And speaking of uh, cutting some pieces, um, I find cutting on a board like this green board, it's a little spongy and it gives a little too much when I'm trying to, you know, try to cut something. And sometimes I'll get a whistle cut. This happens to be uh, made of the same material that your kitchen counters are made of. And a friend of mine who's in construction made some of these cutting boards uh, for my wife and I stole one to use this, uh, use for uh, cutting purposes like this. Uh, I really like uh, cutting on this hard surface. The only thing to mention about the 1 16th inch tubing is that I'm using a rod end that's slightly larger, uh, the stem is slightly larger than the inside diameter of the tubing. And they do make a, uh, a rod end that fits right in there, but it's just a little bit smaller. And I think I like the looks of this larger one, and um, I think it's going to look good in the overall mouth. I think that's going to stand out just a little bit more. So I had to drill the, um, uh, the tubing out with a number 63 drill bit because the uh, rod end stem diameter is 37 thousandths. So I used the number 63 drill bit, just drilled a little bit so I could get the rod end in there. And you'll notice also there's a little jam nut you know, right behind that. Um, and that comes with the rod ends. So um, then it's just a matter of trimming this to, uh, to length and uh, good to go. Making this bracket around the wheel is a little tedious because the piece of uh, aluminum is so thin, so small, plus I'm drilling a couple of holes in here too. Uh, one hole goes through both sides to hold the, the wheel on, and one hole is in the back here because this piece has to glue on, or I'm going to probably epoxy it, but uh, just to glue it on like that, it's not going to work, it's not going to hold. So I'm going to stick a pin through the back to uh, reinforce that. I'm going to start by cutting a small piece of, uh, of that aluminum. And then I recently bought these pair of um, uh, tin snips from Micromark. And boy, can I get a nice, clean, small cut with that. I love it. This piece has to be smaller than your wheel is wide. Otherwise, the wheel isn't going to be on the ground. So that determ this is determined, the size is determined by your, um, by your wheel. And uh, this piece of stock happens to be the same uh, thickness width as my wheel. So, you know, it's easy to take this and just bend it around this piece of uh, styrene. And you've got 
your little bracket. Of course, it's going to be much shorter if you've got your bracket. And um, plus, uh, the holes obviously need to be cut. The next step is to, while it's on that, uh, that's, that piece of styrene, the next step is to, you know, just um, drill through it. I left the drill in here to see, so you can see what it looks like. And there's, there's one side of it. I've already got a hole here in the back where the pin's going to come through. And now this side, I just have to cut off. So um, the next step from there is this piece, which is actually a finished piece, just like uh, what you just saw. And uh, you can see I've got the bolt in there. Um, I've got the wheel in place. This side is complete. This other half, if you just kind of, you know, don't look at that, that's what it's going to look like. This piece in the back here is just there. I haven't cut it off yet because I have to take this back apart to glue it. Also to uh, paint the wheel. I want to paint it flat black. But you can see I've got the bolt in there. It goes all the way through. And I just need to cut this piece off and it's uh, ready to go. And if I pull this out, you'll see the pin I've got in the back. So that's what it looks like. Complete.